Today we're making this gnome wreath from Dollar Tree. Keep watching. We're going to start off with a Dollar Tree gnome. They have them in two sizes and this one is actually about six inches tall. So it's the smaller one. Haven't found the bigger one yet. Going to use some of this. It's like a velvet ribbon and it's wired and this came from Dollar Tree. This checkered ribbon came from Big Lots and it's the same size. It's kind of a burlap texture but if you have the black and white from Dollar Tree you could always use that. That was from fall. These are some picks from the thrift store and these are some random picks that I had left over from other projects that I've saved over the years. And then we're going to need mesh from the Dollar Tree, which is the black and white. We're going to need a 14 inch wreath from the Dollar Tree, these wire ones. And then I thrifted this, um, this mesh right here. It came from the wheel. So this is the black and white that they had over fall, like I said, um, if you were lucky enough to get some of this. I wish I would have gotten more, but I didn't, but there is enough definitely for this project. We're going to start by wrapping this. If you've ever made a deco mesh wreath, then you know the procedure here. I'm just going to tie mine to the wreath rather than trying to make my first wrap with the wire here. Also, you might want to know that you can always put your pipe cleaners or chenille stems, whatever you want to call them. You can put those on the wreath first so that you don't have to do it as you go if you would like. But in my situation, I find that they snag a lot when you're trying to move around the wreath. So I'd rather just do it one at a time. And this is just procedure. So you'll see me put my hand toward the bottom of the screen there. I have a tape measure on the bottom on the edge of my table and I measure in 10 inch poofs. Now you just go from the tied area down 10 inches, kind of make a little poof area, push it toward the, so it's got some slack in it. And there you go. You have your little poofs. In order to keep the, your ties and your, your mesh there to keep from slipping up and down, you're gonna have to put it around that middle piece and the outer piece. And that's gonna hold it in place at each one of those little points there where it has the crossbar and that's what you want to do. You want to wrap it around both of those. Otherwise, if you just wrap it around the outside link by itself, it's going to slide up and down. And that is not going to be fun to have to deal with. So since I'm using this light gray color, I mean, you can use whatever color you have or want, whatever coordinates with what you're using. I thought that the gray looked great with the gray in the gnome and in his little hat and it looks good with the black and white checkers also. Okay, so now we're gonna go into the next ring. We're just going to start on the next ring up from where we started and do about 10 inches. Same thing, and you wanna do that all the way around. Believe me, it gets worse before it gets better better hmm. better if you've ever done these projects before it, it, it looks kind of rough for a little while but but you're gonna fluff it up and it's gonna start to look better so you're gonna cut off when you're done with that and we're gonna start adding the black and white I'm measuring it down there and now I'm just making a little end to bundle up here and I'm going to add it to the tie that's already there and I am going with that I think I'm in the second loop there, the second hoop. No, I know what I did. Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. That's what I did. I got myself mixed up there, but yes. And it's going to kind of lie above and in between the first and the second row. Again, your pipe cleaners, you can cut those off when you're done with them. They're not going to be, they're not going to be showing. So you can remove anything that 
you don't need but I leave them on here because I wasn't really sure what else I wanted to attach and they would have been convenient to be there when I got ready to add something on if need be. Be sure you subscribe and follow me on Instagram and on Pinterest and if you look below you can find in the description box that information. And I am working on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule, but there are definitely times when you get videos five times a week. Depends on how constructive and crafty I'm feeling. Okay, so that ring is done. I'm just cutting it off. You can see how that looks. And I'm gonna start making the little bundles that are going to go throughout the wreath. I picked this darker red here because it matches better with, you know, there's all kinds of shades of reds and um, this just happens to match better with that color that is on the gnome. I don't like to mix my reds. It really, it kind of bugs me, to be honest with you, to have like a dark red and then a, a orangey red. I, I just don't like that. So I tried to get this to match as good as possible and to match with the gnome as nicely as possible. So I'm cutting off eight inch pieces here and I'm going to make enough to go all the way around the wreath. One with the velvet, one with the burlap, and I am just going to go ahead and dovetail all those ends. Make sure you do them all and then pick a place to start. And I am going to start right there in the center of that black and white one. I'm gonna keep the plaid or the checkered one on top. And I'm gonna do that all the way around. You can see how it's attached. You just press it down, hold it securely, and twist that tie that is conveniently still there from the mesh that we wrapped around. It's wired ribbon, so you can fluff it out and give it a little bit of shape if you like. Or you can certainly wait until the end to do that. So who's finished shopping for Christmas? Anyone? Anyone? I'm not. And I don't know how closer I'm going to get. It's been a crazy year and uh, equally crazy holiday season for me, I think, for everybody. So, yeah, may have some late things. Definitely aren't going to be able to participate in the holiday get togethers that we enjoy so much every year, but we got to keep our loved ones safe, and that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so here we are on the last one, and I'm going to press it down, just kind of hold it tightly there, and twist that down. Now we can start to fluff out those little bow ends if we want to. And I'm going to add one more row of black and white. I decided it looked a little, little sad and sparse in the middle, so on the very smallest ring there, I'm going to tie this on and then make, I think the poofs are like maybe six inches. They're a lot smaller. I didn't measure them this time. It was too difficult to measure. Um, but I think they were about six inches. Definitely smaller than the, um, the ones we started with. Same process here. You're just going to wrap it and then tie it down. I think this is a cute wreath that because of the red, you could probably use it for Christmas. You could definitely use it all through a winter, I would think, but that's my opinion. It's not the colors that I am normally drawn to, but I think it is so cute and I, I really like the way it turns out. It's very, very cute and I hope and hope and hope that some of you guys try this. I know a couple of girls who are big supporters that that may be doing this at home. I've got some girls who like to craft together. And um, yeah, I think this would be a fun one to do. If you don't have that gray, you can use any color you want. 
You get anything you want that will match. They certainly have a lot of red if you can still find it in your stores. Maybe even white. Okay, so now I'm just going to take these little pliers that I have and just clip off some extras and fluff out where they need to be fluffed. Now it's a silver wreath form underneath there, thankfully, so it kind of blends in. You don't notice it as much. I mean, if you really make the effort to look at it, call it to your attention, you know, then you can see it, but that does not bother me. Okay, so I'm alternating, pulling these out, these little tails out with like a dark on the top. Do you see how I have it there? Kind of makes an X shape and I've just alternated it all the way around. Oh, it's so cute. I'm really loving it already. It, I think it looks cute. Trim off where you need to trim, like I said before. Just go ahead and cut off what is not needed. If there's any on the inside that you can see, I see some white ones in there that I probably did not clip off. Then you can go ahead and get those off. And there's our little cute gnome. You see how well he coordinates with the colors that are in the wreath? Looks really nice. It's kind of a dark red, I think. So here are just my little picks. I'm going to wrap them with a little bit of the pipe cleaner to secure them down to my wreath form. I'm going to do one on the left, one on the right, because this is going to be like a little, a little staging area, if you will, for our gnome to stand. Feel free to fluff those out and bend them. They are wired, so you can bend those to get the position that you need. You know, you can get all kinds of little picks at Dollar Tree that you can use on this, and you can get red berry picks at Dollar Tree. So use that. Use what you have on hand that's left over if you, if you would like to. Now I just put the berries and one of those little pieces of greenery together. I'm going to press those down, and then I'm going to secure them with that little pipe cleaner that I wrapped around it. That's going to be the base of where our little gnome is going to stand or sit. We're going to cut that little hanger off the top because he was a Christmas tree ornament. And I've decided that he needs a little white pom-pom ball on top of his hat. So just do that if you'd like. Or you can make a homemade pom-pom if you wanted to. See where we're going to set him. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of this floral wire, press it through the back of his hat, and then twist him onto the mesh that is behind him so that he doesn't go anywhere. And you can actually do that on the frame if you would like. But he sat nice, nicely in his place right there. You could also glue the bottom onto your greenery if you wanted to for a little added security. But he sits there nicely. Then I decided what if we use these as snowballs and we add one in the center of each of these little bundles. So what would you do? Would you leave it like that or would you add these little pom-poms? If you didn't have pom-poms you could also use some of that. They have silver and white and white and gold table scatter. Those would be That'd be something that you could use in there. It's just a little ball. You could use little ornaments if you wanted to use it for Christmas. A little peppermint candy ornaments or something like that would probably be cute. Or you could take some of those berries and put in the center if you wanted. These to me look like snowballs. And what says winter better than snowballs? Now just pull apart what you need to, fluff it up, fix your florals, fix your wires, and this is the end result. I think he's precious, and he's very welcomed at my home. So are you going to be trying this 
for yourself? If you are, I would love to hear about it. Tag me on Instagram. Show me how yours turned out. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that everyone has a very happy holiday. Remember to look for videos from me every week, and I will see you again very soon. Bye!